the, the applicant will speak to why that's they don't they don't think that is possible. OK, so but and so please just be patient with me. I want to make sure that what you're showing me is exactly what I'm supposed to what I'm looking at, because what I'm confused about is like there's you said there were a few different areas with this building that was going to have signage that you want to approve. And then there are areas in which you don't want to approve it. So what you what I'm looking at, am I driving down north or down Penn Avenue going south? Looking at this signage of the picture that I'm looking, maybe I should just show you. Can you see that? Yes, I see the I see the rendering. Um, okay. Is this what we're discussing? It would probably be most helpful. Um, it could I have you please put the uh, page two of the um, the the one page prior to this, please, on the presentation. Okay. So you see why I'm confused as to what we're looking at because, okay. So here's an here's a sign plan of the entire site. Mm -hmm. And again, north is off to our right. So Penn yep. is what's traveling uh, is, yep. is North South Road, right? So yep. there's a wall sign at the facing the Urban League at the south um, south end of the site facing Penn. Yeah, down in the corner. That is the sign for which they uh, the applicant has requested a variance from 20 feet to 27 feet, seven inches and staff is recommending denial. OK, so what I'm looking at is actually a part. It's it's not across the street from it's not this that location across the street from the Urban League. Correct. The sign that's facing the Urban League is the sign they okay. have requested for a variance that staff is recommending. OK. Yep. All right. I think I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be then. Thanks. It's a big building. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, any other commissioners have any questions for staff at this point? Um, OK, uh, well then. Yes, thank you. Um, in that case, I will now open the public hearing for this item. And if the applicant is present to speak about this item and you can press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. Um, Richard Lay, if you're on the line. Yes, this is Richard Lay with AECOM. Um, I'm here speaking to the applicant for this particular variant that we're speaking of today. I believe the image that you're looking at is one of the renderings that we prepared to help understand the impact of the height of the signage. Um, so as you're driving down Plymouth towards Penn, we've, we've uploaded a couple of images uh, that as we walk down Plymouth, you start to see where that signage is in relation to the height uh, and to the standard height of 20 feet. So you'll see it by as we drive down Plymouth in those different options of, of high and low. If we go to the low, it really is hidden behind the planned um, landscaping for the project. So we don't feel, and we show that in, in three different three different sections of the high and low images, so that you can see what is proposed against what would be. Um, staying within the guidelines or the standards of the 20 feet. Our feeling is that this is kind of a, this is an important pathway here coming down Plymouth and that's why the signage here is important for this facility uh, in this area at the height that we're proposing um, above the 20 feet. So hopefully you're all seeing those images. That's what I uploaded this afternoon. Uh, and I believe that's what you're looking at. Is there some other questions I can help answer? Uh, thank you. Um, let's pose that to the commission. Is there any one of the commissioners who would like to ask a question of the applicant? Commissioner Caprini. Okay, so I was actually trying to text comment, but I didn't. Um, so that is what I'm looking at, and that was exactly what I'm talking about. I just wanted to make sure that um, Sharon, Sarah, who presented, I'm sorry, what's the Shannon? Yes. Shanna, I'm so sorry. I rarely ever talk at these meetings. I'm learning and I'm always listening. So um, were you and I on the same page? I will say this was uploaded um, 
from the applicant as part of their presentation. So I didn't have this. And so that's why I wasn't quite sure what you were looking at. Okay, but this see, is the okay, same so sign I'm, that we're talking about. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I guess I will just say that I don't have a question, except I have a comment. Um, and you're saying that the city does not want to approve this variance? Well, I guess I'm disappointed. Um, I understand there are rules and regulations and I realize that the, um, the, uh, the it hasn't been landscaped yet, but I certainly hope that the trees would grow that height. I mean, even if the trees weren't that tall, when you're considerably um, away, like at least a half a block, if not a block away from there, um, I still think it would be um, kind of awkward in, in an awkward spot as far as the eye level. And for me, driving down the street and I drive this street every day to get to work. So, I mean, for, in, in my opinion, I, I think it, we should approve it, but I know we're not there yet. More people probably want to talk. <laughs> so I'm just going to stop there and I like it. I think it's smart and in a good spot. Thank you, Commissioner Caprini. Any other commissioners have a question for the applicant? Or maybe staff even? Okay, not seeing anything. Uh, thank you. Oh, wait, Commissioner Baxley. Sorry, I didn't mean to sneak that in at the end there. Um, just a question regarding the, the, the landscape. And, you know, these things are all considered together, right? Signage, scale of plantings was, this could be uh, Richard or the, uh, or staff, um, were those specific species and or size um, you know, part of the design? Was the city asking for certain things there? And just a little bit background about how all that evolved would be helpful for us, I think. Yeah, this is Rich again. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, yes, all the landscaping was, was part of the process and the design all through the development of the building. Uh, and we had worked through with the client or the owner as well as the signage with them and then the, all the landscaping again, again was part of our, our pdr submission that was ultimately approved so this was all taken into account at the same time and uh, hopefully that answers your question about kind of the, the background or the history of the of the landscaping along with the signage um shanna you wanted to clarify something Sure. Um, as part of the original site plan application that was approved December of last year, this sign was not shown on the building wall elevation. So when we considered this application for its comprehensive site plan review, including the landscaping, screening, parking location, etc., this proposed sign was not included in the sign package. So this was added at the PDR resubmit stage where staff identified um, additional variances were required for the proposed sign package. That being said, um, the approved landscape plan does show ornamental trees in that location. Um, but as we've discussed with the applicant that they have more than one option for sign location at that corner. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Baxley, did you have a follow up? Just one more on the type and species of those trees. I, I'm sure it's in the middle. I just haven't um, found that yet that you know, potentially those trees could also grow a little bit taller too, right? Can I either the applicant or Shanna respond to that maybe? Yeah, I, I, again, this is Richard. I, again, I, I believe they probably could. Um, being an architect and not uh, an arborist or a landscape architect, I can't answer that 100%, but you know, uh, trees grow and, and sometimes they go a little bit taller than we, than we think they're gonna go. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Caprini. That's why we have people who prune trees and, and take care of all of that kind of stuff. I mean, that's we have to take care of them, right? I don't know. I just I think that I, I like the sign where it is because again, like I said, driving down Penn Avenue for it to be at that height, it just seems like it just flows so much better um, with the building. And I don't know, I guess I'd have to have a better understanding as to why and, and not just that it was added after it had been um, approved. Um, I just guess I want to understand why is it just yeah, why? 
Um, Kimberly? Shanna can speak to the findings as well, but there are findings laid out in your staff report that do need to be met in order to make a recommendation for approval of the sign heights. The first finding being whether or not there's a practical difficulty here unique to the property that prevents them from meeting the sign height requirements. Um, the additional findings two and three are also laid out in the staff report. And then there's some additional findings that are specific to sign variances. If the commission were to make a motion uh, that goes against the staff recommendation, the commission would need to come up with findings for approval of the sign variance. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Commissioner Caprini, does, do you have a follow up? Oh, wait, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, it says I'm muted. Oh, but you can hear me. Yes. Um, no, but I'm, I'm glad that Kimberly explained that because um, I guess I wish I could come up with some findings as to why we could leave it the way that it is. But the reality is I'm not going to waste anyone's time and, and try to figure that out unless um, there are other commissioners that um, have some thoughts or ideas surrounding that. Um, I guess I would appreciate entertaining the idea or maybe perhaps having the conversation. Um, but if that isn't something that folks are willing to do, because obviously Shanna has said that there are um, other areas around the building where signage um, can be and, and will be. Um, I guess I think I was thinking a bit selfishly um, because I do drive that street quite a bit and um, it just makes sense in my head to be able to see the sign at that at that level above what could be trees in front of what could be or behind what could be trees. Um, so yeah, no, I actually I don't. Thank you, Commissioner Caprini. Any other commissioners have a question for the applicant, Commissioner Ford? Uh, thank you. Um, just so I understand what Kimberly said, uh, is, is it? Am I correct in thinking that um, that there there exists a city ordinance or a policy um, that states the maximum uh, height of these signs of this kind of sign? and that um, that the ordinance or policy allows us to uh, approve a variance but only if or not only if but uh, if there is no other uh, reasonable alternative is that a correct statement i uh, maybe kimberly can uh, talk about that if you're talking about the practical difficulty that's one of the conditions yeah right so practical difficulty is not asking the commission to find that there's no reasonable alternative. It's simply asking, is there a practical difficulty here unique to this particular property that prevents them from complying with the sign height regulations and they can't be based on financial considerations alone? And, and uh, am I correct that no one has, has provided a um, evidence of a practical difficulty. The staff report did not find that there was a practical difficulty for this particular variance. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ford. Any anyone else? OK, um, that actually completes the uh, list of our registered speakers because uh, the public hearing is still open. Is there anyone else on this call who would like to speak on this item who did not get a chance to register in advance? If there is, please press star, uh, press star six to unmute yourself and then continue with your name and address. Just give it a few seconds. Okay, not hearing anything. I will now close the public hearing on item number seven. Um, and just making sure there's no additional discussion or questions by the commission related to this item. Okay, uh, Commissioner Olson. Thank you. Uh, I will make a motion to um, adopt items A, B, C, and D as recommended by staff. Thank you, a motion has been made. Is there a second?
Commissioner Meyer. Second. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, not hearing anything. I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll on the motion. Commissioner Baxley. Aye. Commissioner Caprini. Aye. Commissioner Ford. Aye. Commissioner McGuire. Aye. Commissioner McGuire. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Olson. Aye. I've been informed uh, Commissioner Schrader won't be joining us this evening. Uh, Commissioner Sweezy. Aye. One more time, Commissioner McGuire. Kara Smiley. Aye. That's seven yeas and zero nays. Thank you, and that uh, motion passes. Um, if you have any further question, please do contact the staff on this item. Uh, next item on our agenda is item number eight, 401 Main Street Northeast, and staff is Peter Crandall. Go ahead, Peter. Good evening, commissioners. Our next item is located at 401 Main Street Northeast. It is a single zoning parcel that is currently zoned for the R1A multiple family district. It is in the Mississippi River critical corridor area overlay district and guided for the interior three built form overlay district. Next slide. This is a survey showing the existing conditions on the site and the existing dwelling, which is a single family home. Um, the site is approximately 11,000 square feet in area. And as you can see, has a somewhat larger established setback um, than the underlying zoning might require otherwise. And then the Main Street Northeast public right of way curves to the north west away from the properties along this street. Next slide. The applicant is proposing to demolish the existing home on the site in order to construct a new three story multi unit building with 31 dwelling units. This is a rendering showing that proposal from the front of the property looking from Main Street Northeast. Next slide. And then a bird's eye aerial showing that site in some of its context. There are other single family homes to the north and to the south, the property is immediately adjacent to a surface parking lot that is accessory to the Ukrainian event center, which is uh, labeled six on this slide. And then across the street immediately is uh, BF Nelson Park. Next slide. This is a plan showing the proposed 31 unit building on the site and that context that I just mentioned. Next slide. And a site plan of the proposed structure. Next slide. Landscaping plan. Next slide. And the ground floor. The applicant is also proposing one level of underground enclosed parking, which would accommodate 15 enclosed vehicle parking stalls and the required bicycle parking. Next slide. And I should mention that the access to the vehicle parking is off of Main Street via a curb cut. Uh, this slide details um, the three variance requests that the applicant is requesting tonight. Um, one of the variances is to reduce the minimum front yard. 
in the uh, interior three built form district, the required front yard would be 20 feet per the um, standard requirements in the zoning district. The established front yard as shown in the survey that was previously displayed is 35.3 feet. So the applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the established front yard from 35 feet to 20 feet, two inches for the building wall, and then 33 feet, two inches for the proposed transformer, which you can see in the south interior side yard towards the front of the proposed structure. The applicant is also requesting two interior side yard variances. So in this instance, um, in the interior three district, the standard interior side yard requirement is five feet. However, because this particular project, um, the length of the building as compared to the depth of the site is greater than 75%, that increases the required interior side yard to seven feet on both sides of the structure. So the required interior side yard here is seven feet. The building meets that requirement, but they are requesting variances to encroach on the interior side yard on the south side for balconies and portions of the building wall that are cantilevered into the side yard, as well as ground level, ground level patios. And then additionally, that transformer is encroaching on the interior side yard. So the um, south side yard variance request includes the transformer as well. On the north interior side yard, the applicant is requesting a variance for ground level patios and for balconies on the upper level that are not permitted encroachments. Next slide. And then this slide uh, just shows those um, south side yard facing balconies that are cantilevered at an angle into the interior side yard, and then the two smaller balconies on the north interior side yard that require the variance. Next slide. And next slide. Next slide. These are some renderings of the proposed elevations. Um, the South interior elevation is on the lower right with those cantilever balconies shown. And then on the north interior side yard elevation, you can see the proposed ground level patios and then the um, four smaller balconies on the upper second and third levels. And then on the front elevation, you can see that vehicle access point. Next slide. The proposed exterior materials are a mix of masonry and metal panel with a variety of finishes. Next slide. And then a proposed shadow study of the project. Next slide. And then another rendering. So um, in order to uh, entitle this project, the applicant is requesting a rezoning from the existing R1A multiple family district to the R3 multiple family district. The rezoning would allow for the development of a multiple family structure on the site, which is not currently allowed under the R1A zoning. Those three variances that I just outlined, um, which include the uh, established front yard for the building wall and then the two interior side yards for the balconies and transformer, and then site plan review for the new three story residential building with 31 dwelling units. Staff is recommending approval of the rezoning as well as the variance to the minimum established front yard. And then we are recommending partial approval of the south interior side yard setback for the transformer. However, we are not recommending approval of the encroachment for the balconies um, and the ground level patios on either the south interior side yard or the north interior side yard. So that would be a recommendation of denial on the variance for the north interior side yard which faces that adjacent single family home. 
and then partially approving the south interior side yard solely for the transformer encroachment and then approval of the site plan review for the new three-story residential building with 31 dwelling units. I will stop there and I can take questions. Thank you, Peter, for the presentation. Does the commission have any questions for staff? Anyone? Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any questions from the commission. Uh, so I will now open the public hearing. Um, is the applicant here to speak on this item? If you are, please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. I have, um, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I don't know if I would be able to pronounce your last name correctly, Mark. Um, so I'm just gonna stop there. Or Carol Lansing or Scott England. Any of you guys who are um, on the line who would like to unmute and speak to this project, please go ahead. Good evening, um, Mark, are you still on the line? This is Scott England of DJR Architecture. And this is Carol Lansing with Fagri Drinker. Um, Mark is uh, the, uh, part of the developer group and mm -hmm. in case he's got some technical difficulties of his own, um, I know he wanted to uh, thank staff for working on this. Um, and let you know a little bit about you know, the fact that he's lived and has worked in the neighborhood for a long time. Um, we do accept staff recommendation on the denial of the North variance application. Um, we understand the concerns that the neighborhood and, and staff have uh, presented on that. Uh, but we would like, of course, your support for the rezoning and the front yard variances, the site plan review, and notwithstanding the staff recommendation, we would like um, your support on the south side yard variances, which I will talk about mm -hmm. more. Um, at this point, if Mark is on now, is there anything you want to add before we turn it over to Scott to talk a bit about the design? I am here. This is Mark Hughes, coach. My apologies. Okay. I had the phone on mute. Um, and yes, just wanted to say thank you for your time this evening. And I'm here for any questions. However, uh, Scott, with DJR and Carol Hansing would like to speak. Okay, thank you. Um, Peter, can you or can staff um, show the the five slide um, presentation that I, we sent over earlier today? Tell me when that's ready. I believe this is, is this the one who's that's on the on screen, Peter? I think so. I haven't seen what the applicant um, submitted, but is I believe this is. Long? Yeah, is it the is it the front rendering on the first slide? Yeah, Scott. Yeah, it, okay, it, then it, that is showing. It is. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you, commissioners, for your consideration of this land use application this evening. Um, we are very excited about this apartment development that will be the first in, in this portion of the neighborhood that follows the guidance of the 2040 comprehensive plan for an interior three, along with subsequent zoning revision. Uh, also, thank you to Peter Crandall for his assistance on this development. The slide that you are seeing now is a rendering of the proposed building as viewed from across the street, uh, which is at the BF Nelson Park. It is a three-story apartment building taking on a contemporary vocabulary with a masonry base, large window openings and metal clad siding on the upper floor. The front corner of the building on the left side of this view is the main lobby, which we are proposing a story and a half height lobby with floor to ceiling glazing for a very light transparent appearance. The access to the underground garage is located to the right side of the street uh, on the street side. And on the right side of the building is a series of balconies and a sawtooth configuration, which I'll discuss further in a moment. On the very right side of this view is the parking lot for our neighbor, the Ukrainian Center. May I have the next slide, please? <clears throat> this slide um, shows 
The relationship of the proposed building to the overall block, see the highlighted portion in the center of the view. To the bottom of the page is D.F. Nelson Park and the Mississippi River beyond, and then also views of downtown Minneapolis in the distance. To the right of the site is the Ukrainian Center with the large surface parking lot. But directly to the right of the property and kind of highlighted in white there um, is a, a easement that runs all the way from Main Street through to Second Street and Northeast. There's an existing 50 foot, 56 foot wide easement that is used for stormwater and gas mains. So, so it's a pretty permanent easement. The guidance from the 2040 comprehensive plan for this portion of the neighborhood is an interior three, which is a change certainly from the current single family home um, condition. As you can see, the single family homes on this side of the block are set back significantly more than the typical situation that are on other parts of this block and the overall neighborhood. Additionally, with the curving of the street, the front yards of the buildings get significantly larger than the usual setbacks for an interior three use. The transparency of the lobby will still permit neighbors to use through the building to the park area. Our request is to grant the request for the front yard setback to the setback permitted in the zoning classification as indicated by Peter earlier today. The size of this parcel in, in interior three use is smaller in size, but it still meets the, the minimum standard. However, the size does make the development of the site challenging. The development team's goal is to provide as many residential units with views of the park and the river and Minneapolis down, downtown skyline beyond. To make this happen and to provide visual interest to this highly visible right side of the building, we have incorporated a sawtooth condition at each of these right side units on the upper two floors. The proposal is to have the angled walls and angled balconies facing the views. The requested variance is to permit the balconies to project into the right side courtyard or side yard. With the utility easement directly next to the property, the western portion of the Ukrainian Central's property will never really um, have a building because of the set of, the, of that easement. Thus, not meeting the separation that normally is um, used for the, the set that or balconies in a side yard set. Next slide, please. As Peter um, show, showed you earlier, uh, this is a, a slide showing the underground garage and the first floor plan. Um, it shows that the you know, building itself is um, holding to the setbacks. Um, and then the next slide, please. And this one, it shows the second and third floors of the building. So you see that the main portion of the building itself is staying um, outside of the seven foot setback on the south side. Um, it's just really the balconies that are projecting out into that um, section of the property. And then if you <clears throat> go to the last slide, this is another view of the development standing a little bit further to, um, to the, showing a little bit more of the side of the building, this highly visible facade with the Ukrainian center's parking lot in the foreground. Uh, we thank you for your consideration of this development and are here to answer any questions that you might have. And I'm not sure, Carol, if you had anything else that you wanted to add to the conversation with you. I, I do, but I will wait a moment in case there's some commissioners who had questions for you. Okay. Um, uh, there actually is, but before we do that, I, I'm going to officially hand the meeting over to Commissioner Olson uh, to take over from this point and, and we will move on from there. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so let's go to Commissioner Caprini. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Vice Chair. So um, multifamily, um, 10 studios at 350 to 390 square feet, 21 bedrooms, 500 to 600 square feet. So unless everybody in the building is, is literally related like by blood, I guess that's this is my comment, and that's why I would see it as multifamily. I mean, I mean, realistically, um, that's I guess I'm beginning to get a really much better understanding of of all of the rules and regulations and how we have to literally like um, follow some of this stuff. It's just behoof. It just makes me kind of crazy to think that you could consider this a multifamily, or would would we 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 would consider it changing the zoning. Or to be considered multifamily 
when, I mean, 10 studios at 300, 350 square feet, what family is li living in that? Or, or a single person? I'm glad you're there, Kimberly, because I'm just, I just don't get it. And then 21 bedrooms that are, are, are uh, one bedroom. So it's not multifamily. I mean, I realize that the birth rate has gone down <laughs> and there's the expectancy that there will be far less children being born in the next, I don't know. I just, I don't, I think this is, it's tough. Because so, I, we, know Caprini, gonna we, we know who's oh. going to move in, right? Go I ahead. mean, I do. I know who's going to move in down there by the river. And it's not going to, well, anyway, go ahead. The reference to multifamily is referring to the number of dwelling units in the structure. Yeah. So it's a common zoning term to refer to districts where more than one dwelling unit is allowed to refer mm -hmm. to them as multifamily. So mm -hmm. we are no longer in the city do we have any single family zoning districts, but when we did, those were districts that allowed for one dwelling unit, one house. I we understand had and I, I, I understand all of that. I think okay. what, what's happening is that I'm just, uh, I'm looking at it from another perspective and I got to get myself back to uh, what my responsibility is here on this commission. And um, because if it really was multifamily, then why not 15 units instead of 31 and put two or three bedrooms in there? And then you could actually have a family in there, but I get it. So I'll just stop there and um, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, Commissioner Meyer. Thank you. I'm just trying to follow along with what the applicant is requesting because um, the applicant, I believe you said you're okay with um, staff recommendation to deny item D on the north property. And then for the other applications, staff is recommending approval. So, so what is it that you were asking for that staff hasn't already done? Aside from the the recommended denial for AMD, can I just make a clarification there? Yes, please, um, Commissioner Meyer. So staff is recommending uh, an approval only for the transformer on the south interior side yard. We're recommending denial of the encroachment for the proposed balconies and the ground level patios. So I believe that the applicant, and they can clarify this if, if I'm incorrect, but they're, they would like for the commission to grant the variance for all of those encroachments, transformer, balconies, and ground level patios, where, whereas we are only recommending approval of the transformer encroachment. So if, if staff recommendation were upheld, the project would need to be revised such that there were no balcony or patio encroachments in the south yard. Okay, so the applicant is requesting a revision to the staff recommendation for item C, is that right? Right place? Yes. Okay, and can you just repeat your recommendation um, for why not to include uh, balconies or ground level patios? Yeah, we, we couldn't find a practical difficulty with the site that would allow us to recommend approval of those on either side of the structure. Commissioners, are there any other questions for the applicant? All right. Um, we don't have any more registered speakers, but if there is anyone else on the line who would like to speak on this item, you can do so now. Um, you can press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. Hello, Commissioners. This is Carol Lansing again. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Hi, thanks. I, I I only jumped in before to because I thought Mark might not be on. I, I did want to say a few words regarding our variance request. Um, and and thank you, Commissioner Meyer, for clarifying what we are requesting. We are requesting in item C that you approve the uh, variances as requested um, for not just the transformer, but the ground level patios and the balcony. Um, I'll note, as, as Scott did, that only small corners of these angled balconies extend to four and a half feet from the lot line, but the majority of the balcony area and 
uh, building wall does comply with the seven foot setback. Um, staff um, concluded in their findings for this, these variances that the proposed building patio and balcony setbacks are reasonable and consistent with the spirit and intent of the comprehensive plan um, currently due to their location next to an existing uh, large surface parking lot that would eliminate any negative impacts from that yard encroachment. Um, they did note that you know, perhaps future redevelopment of the adjacent property could result in some lack of separation. Um, but as Scott has shown you, there is a 56 foot wide city easement along the west side of that parking lot um, that contains a major storm sewer and that makes that area undevelopable. So there should be no concern with uh, the impact there of future development. Um, also, because of the uh, large adjacent parking lot, staff concluded that the proposed south setback would not alter the essential character of the area or be injurious um, or detrimental to health um, or welfare. Now, we believe though that the proposed setbacks are also responsive to practical difficulties based on unique circumstances related to the property. Um, and first in that regard, I'll note that in finding that the setback of the front balconies was consistent with the spirit and intent of the ordinance and comp plan, staff noted that the balconies would provide outdoor amenity space on an otherwise small lot with limited ability to incorporate outdoor space. Um, I think that the small size of the lot and the difficulty that creates for designing reasonably sized units with outdoor amenity spaces, again, to my mind, also a practical difficulty and that practical difficulty um, applies similarly to providing balconies on the south side. Um, as noted multiple times, now the south side faces a large parking lot. Uh, the, the angle of the balconies mitigates that site condition of being adjacent to that, that large parking lot condition. It mitigates that by opening the view from the balconies away from the parking lot and toward the river. But that, that angling in order to, again, have reasonably sized very uh, balconies uh, does project some into the setback. And then um, finally, the, the neighboring surface parking lot is a condition that also means that the south side facade of the building will be extremely visible for quite a distance along the public street and from the public park across the street. Um, the angled balcony design provides greater engagement with the public realm and a more dynamic and visually interesting design. Um, and I think again, that, that very open condition uh, is a practical difficulty for complying, um, not just with the setback ordinance, but the spirit and intent of, of other um, urban design ordinances. So because of all these unique conditions, um, we uh, do believe there are practical difficulties supporting approval of this variance, and we respectfully request that you approve um, the south side yard variances for the transformer balconies and patio. Thank you, and let us know if you have any other questions. Thank you. If there's anyone else uh, on the line who would like to speak on this item, you can do so now. You can press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. I'll give it a few seconds here. Hello, my name is Gail Bird Mefla. Yep, go ahead, state your uh, address for the record. My address is 405 Main Street, Northeast. I'm next door. Okay, go ahead. Proposal. And I am calling um, to let the commission know that the, this proposal is the beginning of a complete um, uh, transformation of our Pam neighborhood. Hello? We can hear you. Go and, ahead. Okay. Um, this started with a, a large building of, of approximately 50 um, apartments that was built this past year uh, on Second Street. This one is coming up. Um, it, it poses several problems for us right next door to the building and um, also for our neighborhood, the transformation of a historical neighborhood in Minneapolis. Um, 
and many of our, my neighbors are immigrant families that um, don't understand all of the um, uh, hoops that you have to go through to figure out how to participate in a meeting like this. But then again, also today, as I was submitting my, my comments, I received another notification from the Planning Commission uh, about two other buildings that will be built directly behind us. So I want you to be aware that this is, is going to completely transform a uh, neighborhood of family homes. We have lived here for 23 years raised our family here and we have neighbors that are all very concerned about this but don't know how to voice their concerns to the commission. Um, we're building a very large structure next to a family home that will affect our quality of life. The um, the advancing the backyard, the front yard towards the street by 15 some feet or 20 feet makes it so that it's very difficult for us to get out of our parking, our, our, our driving uh, our driveway to our garage because we are coming out onto Main Street, which is a very busy street. And we have to be able to see the cars that come down from Hennepin and um, go through on Main Street. And that will be a structure that um, makes it difficult for us to, to see. So that needs to be something that needs to be considered by the people that are planning this building. But also I want you to understand the impact that it has on family homes in our neighborhood. You are, are transforming a neighborhood without the input. If I'm the only neighbor speaking, it's because the people don't know how to get to you. And what, what to say, they're not, they're not realizing what the impact this is going to have on their home. This is going to have an impact directly on our homes, the valuation of our home. We don't know what it's going to do to our, uh, our property taxes, our property values, and many people in this neighborhood have voiced their concerns as we talk amongst each other uh, on when we come across each other in our neighborhood. There are many people that don't have a way to voice their concerns about these large buildings going up that the, the two that were proposed in the notice that I received today be, that are directly behind my house. So I'll be hemmed in by large apartment buildings built for single people, one bedrooms and studios. And not at an affordable rental rate. Then what the impact that this will have will be to completely transform a neighborhood of family homes, <coughs> excuse me, to something totally different from what it was planned for in a redevelopment probably 25 years ago. So in just 25 years, we're going to totally transform what was planned by the city of Minneapolis <coughs> for this neighborhood. I would hope that the city planning commission had a vision for the neighborhood that met the needs of families who can afford to and if the, the um, cost of living in, in places like this. <coughs> and who will be here? Will it be families who have been supporting the city, raising their children here, sending their kids to schools here, paying property taxes to here for many years, who have been invested in the community, who have a long history with the immigrant families, the Lebanese, the Ukrainian, the uh, the Polish people, the uh, whoever has all lived here, who have been here for many many years, and built this this community, and been a hub for this community, this historic community, which is going to be transformed by the addition of at least four large one bedroom apartment buildings.
And Thank I you for an answer from the Planning Commission. And what do you have to say to us? I, and what I, input you have had from the neighborhood to address our concerns? Thank you for your comment. Uh, is there anyone else on the I line? I hope you also who... read my concerns that I have submitted. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the line who uh, would like to speak on this item? If so, you can press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. Hello, my name is Kami Mathwa, and I am a resident of also 405 Main Street Northeast, which is the property adjacent to this building. Could and you state I'd your like address come, for the record? Yep, it's 405 Main Street Northeast. Thank you. Go ahead. So my comments, uh, you know, in the presentation from the developers, uh, I noticed that very conveniently they focused a lot on the south facing side of the building that faces the Ukrainian Center parking lot, but really no mention was given to the north side of the building, which happens to be where our home is. I thought this was an interesting thing to leave out. No comment was made about the impact that this building has to the single family homes to the north, including ours, about the encroachment they are asking for in the variances to the side yard, to the front yard, and to the rezoning as well. The, my question to the commission is, what is the point of having zoning districts, zoning requirements, if you're just going to approve every variance that a developer puts in front of you? Wouldn't there need to be some kind of compelling reason, some sort of community benefit, or some sort of practical impossibility to grant a variance? Otherwise, I don't see a reason to grant the variances requested or to rezone the property as requested either. It's currently not zoned for the type of building that they are requesting to build. The lot currently houses a single family home and they're requesting to build 31 units on what used to be containing one home. They're asking for variances for you to grant due to their practical difficulties and unique nature of the site. The variances that they're requesting have nothing to do with the site and everything to do with the design that they have put in place and the fact that they're trying to cram 31 units onto 11,000 square feet. So my answer to them would be, it's not the site that needs a variance, it's that your design is cramming too many apartments onto a single lot. If the lot cannot accommodate the plan and fit the current requirements of zoning in the city, then I see absolutely no reason why it should be granted, except to let developers run roughshod over the Planning Commission and the current zoning requirements in this city. The only reason I see that this Planning Commission would grant the variances is to line the pockets of the developers, because these apartment buildings, as, as uh, Councilmember Caprini noted, are studios and one bedroom, 300 to you know 600 square feet, no families are going to live in there. The, the apartment building has no affordable housing in it. So I don't see what benefit this brings to our community. There are countless buildings that have been built in this community over the past 10 years with no plan about the impact they have on the neighborhood, on the property values of the single family homes in the neighborhood, or on how the neighborhood looks and how it serves the community. And this is just another example of developers picking off single family lots willy nilly and putting whatever they feel like up in place to the detriment of the residents of this community. We've lived in this house for 23 years. What is this gonna do to our property values when they are sur surrounded on three sides by over 100 single unit apartments? Who's gonna wanna buy our house? I'll tell you who. The only people who will buy it less after we are ready to move 
or, you know, our parents get too old are the developers. And that's their plan is to pick off these houses one by one because we'll have no one left to sell them to but them. So I really encourage you to think about these decisions and how they impact the residents of these neighborhoods. I don't see the burden of these buildings being put on other neighborhoods in the city as much as we have felt it in Ward 3. I don't see this happening in Kenwood. I don't see this happening around Lake of the Isles. I don't see this happening in South Minneapolis. So why do we bear the burden of development that is gone completely unchecked in this neighborhood? And I really encourage the City Planning Commission to think deeply about that. And I will also note that there is very strong opposition to this from many neighbors in this in this in this community, including the uh, the neighborhood council, the San Anthony West Neighborhood Council, which voted unanimously in a meeting with these developers. Every single one voted against them. So I want that on the record as well. And thank you. I respectfully ask that you deny all of these hearings. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else on the line who would like to speak on this item? Uh, if so, press star six to unmute yourself uh, and uh, state your name and address for the record. And if, if everyone could try to not repeat um, what previous speakers have said, um, just in the interest of time, we would appreciate that. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? If so, press star six to unmute yourself. All right, I am not hearing anyone, so I will close the public hearing. Hello, this. Oh, we heard you for a second. Press star six to unmute yourself. Yes, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Go ahead. Please state your name and address for the record. Yes, this is Mark Uviscovich, a developer. Uh, okay, we can. Okay, I just wanted to apologize, let you know I, I am here. Um, my phone has been on and off mute. Okay. So I, am here, I am here if there's any questions, um, and I just want to let, um, or I just want to thank your, thank you for your time. Um, on behalf of, um, on behalf of the development group, uh, which is uh, all Ukrainians born and raised in the area, uh, grew up in the Ukrainian Community Center, and uh, have lived most of our adult lives in Northeast. We're very passionate about the area and we're happy to provide additional housing for future residents to enjoy the great uh, area in Minneapolis amenities. So thank you for your time. Thank you. I'll give one last call for speakers on the line. Press star six to unmute yourself. All right, I'm not seeing any, so I will now close the public hearing. Um, commissioners, uh, let's see, Commissioner Sweezy, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Vice President. Um, my comments won't be entirely responsive to the callers, but um, I, I, am, I am sympathetic to, to what they say, particularly being so close to this building. But I think this project is an excellent example of the extraordinarily predictable um, results of the um, adoption of the 2040 comp plan. Um, with that came the elimination of requiring um, or any, any single family homes anywhere in the city. And um, for the callers and for other people who weren't on the Planning Commission, when we go back to 2017 and 2018, when we spent so much time debating this and discussing it, this is the this is the um, impact and the result of those changes 
which, uh, you know, the threeplex ordinances and everything that these these larger buildings and everything, you know, they, they can go everywhere citywide now. And um, and they have started to do that. And um, I can understand the point of view of callers, particularly in this part of the city who believe that they're paying uh, that they're bearing the brunt of it. But I can also tell you as a long standing member of the sitting planning commission that it is happening in other areas of the city also. Um, and in all the neighborhoods that you mentioned, I don't think around Lake of the Isles, but it certainly has around uh, Calhoun slash Bidet Macosca um, and South Minneapolis. Um, and, I, and I do understand that. I am, however, um, going to be voting to approve the variance that's requested, um, that is requested here and go against staff recommendation um, for, for several reasons. And most of them have to do with the fact that um, I, I find this entirely consistent with exactly the purposes of the 2040 comp plan. And I was a little bit surprised to see the recommendations against it, um, particularly two and three. Um, where it says that um, yard controls are established to provide for the ordinary, ordin orderly development. Um, you know, you can put a three story, four story building next to a single family home now. That, um, and to the caller who said, you know, this isn't the way the city planners wanted this when they did it 25 years ago, that may be the case, but it's absolutely the case that that has changed. Um, and that changed with the adoption of the 2040 comp plan. And my feelings about that plan and how it got here and everything are absolutely irrelevant because that's the state of the affairs that we're in now. Um, and that's the reality of the situation. Um, recommendation number three for the variance, speaking to the light and air, I can count on one hand the number of times in six years on the planning commission, I have seen a recommendation to deny a variance based on that. Um, we don't usually take that into account um, when we do it. And so that would be for me, a departure from the precedent of this commission, as would um, not really encouraging the side yards and the balconies. Um, we've been critical of projects that don't have those things, uh, apartments that don't have balconies. Um, I find Ms. Lansing's uh, comments extremely persuasive, particularly as they relate to the limitations of developing in the other direction on the south side uh, because of that, uh, that easement that is clearly unique to the property and outside the owner's control. And then I just want to say one other thing. I think, um, I think it's important to note that it is not the business of this commission to decide who gets to live where or who moves into a building or who may or may not be there or whatever. That's really outside our, our purview. Um, the fact that they are studio apartments um, to me doesn't really matter at all consistent with our precedent on this on this commission. And so I am sympathetic to the callers, but I think to be to be very fair and to be very clear, the landscape that the, we're in is entirely different um, than what it was when um, the neighborhood was put into place. And that's true across the city. So um, I think that those are all um, basis for alternative findings that I would recommend. And I'll actually be supporting the applicant's request for all the variances. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sweezy. Uh, next is Commissioner Ford. Thank you. I have just two quick questions uh, for staff, for Peter. Um, can you remind us, remind me, what the proposed setback is on the uh, Main Street frontage, the, the developer's proposed setback? Sure, Commissioner Ford. Um, the request on the front setback is to reduce that established yard that's established by the property to the north from 35 feet to 20 feet two inches for the front of the building and then to six feet 16 feet two inches for balconies on the front so there would still be six feet uh six, sorry 16 feet two inches between any part of the structure and the front property line and approximately 20 feet between the front of the building and the property line thank you i was just thinking about the uh the comment that, uh, sorry, the comment uh, made by the uh, next door resident 
about um, uh, driveway access to Main Street. Um, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> um, okay. And um, the other question I have is I, I've been hunting and I'm wondering, uh, do we, have we received uh, a letter from the Neighborhood Association about this project? Yes, you should have received a letter in the packet of comments that was delivered today. I think it was the third page in a three-page compilation of comments. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but okay. Uh, and can you would you characterize it as being there oppo they're opposed to it? Uh, I can go back and look at it for you, but um, in general, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner McGuire. Thank you. Um, I will keep this brief. Um, I agree with Commissioner Sweezy on all points. Um, I will. I would like to support all the variance requests as well um, and just add that um, it's not up to this commission to dictate who is and is not a family. Um, many families live in studio apartments and families don't have to be a mom, a dad, and two kids. Um, so I would just urge this commission to be careful about how you talk about who is and isn't a family um, because I don't think we want to get into dictating um, that. Um, and also just urge the <laughs> neighbors to be careful about that as well. Um, thank you. Commissioner Caprini. Thank you for that. So first of all, I don't recall saying anything about who is a family and who is not. And second of all, I do sympathize with the caller simply because when the 2040 plan was in the community being discussed, there were thousands of people who actually thought what they were going to get was something different. So as I, I want to say I'm getting hot in here. <laughs> so as I think about um, my position on this commission and how much I understand what my responsibility is, I too am a part of that community that really believes something different, that I was going to be getting something different. Um, when we talk about uh, um, diversifying our schools, um, that was something that was touted quite a bit about what this 2040 plan was going to bring. Um, I don't see that happening. I can't dictate who lives where, where. I can't dictate who, what developer gets what, um, uh, land or in what area, but what I can do is be very honest and have a willingness to be vulnerable about what myself, what I'm beginning to actually have a better understanding every time I have an opportunity to be at this table. It has been a very long <laughs> year and a half since I've actually been able to um, to uh, to stay online because of the technical difficulties that I've had. Um, so, and, and that's nobody's fault except the computer and you know, just the way things are. But I respect Commissioner Sweezy and her comments. I I am that kind of person who will follow. Um, I will I will do what I'm what, what my job is intended for me to do. I'll come from a place of governing. But I I do take a little. I'm a little taken back by um, being either misunderstood uh, that when we talk about what multifamily housing is. Um, what that really meant to a lot of us who were in the community at all of those meetings talking about what we believed it to be. And so for me, I'm, I'm literally in a space where I know that it isn't what I thought we were having the conversation about. So it, it teaches me a lesson about how I show up in community at tables when we're discussing things that are going to affect uh, the city in, in way I see um, the 2040 plan affecting um, families, no matter what those families look like. So um, I also will be voting for the variances um, just because I'm passionate about what I'm learning, what I don't know, and what I'm um, very excited about uh, of continuing. Um, I agree with Commissioner Sweezy and her comments. So with that, I'm going to stop. Thanks. All right, commissioners, any other comments or discussion or would someone like to make a motion? Commissioner McGuire. 
I'd like to make a motion to adopt items A, B, C, D. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Uh, A, B, C, E as written and motion to recommend adoption of item D as requested by the applicant for the findings that Commissioner Sweezy stated earlier um, and that it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the property is unique um, in the sense that um, they are um, uh, boxed in from the easement on the property line um, and that's it. Thank you. All right, we have a motion uh, and Commissioner Sweezy. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, okay, let's go to Peter. Hi, I, I just wanted to clarify the commissioner's intent um, in their, making their motion they uh, recommended adopting item C as recommended by staff. That item refers to the south interior side yard for which we are not recommending approval of the balcony encroachments. And if Commissioner McGuire's intention was to grant the request of the applicant and to um, grant a variance for those encroachments, we would need to modify that recommendation for item C. So that would we just remove the condition then or? Um, and you would need to modify the language for the recommended motion to approve the variance as requested by the applicants. Okay. Uh, that was my intent, I apologize. Um, so many items on this one. Um, so I would recommend um, to approve item C as requested by the applicant and as staff stated. Is that sufficient, Peter? Yes, I believe so. And then were okay. you also recommending approval of item D notwithstanding staff recommendation? I would recommend um, approval of D as well, notwithstanding staff recommendation. Okay, and then we would just need to make findings for that. So the same findings as stated by Commissioner Sweezy um, in that it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. And I think it has been the precedent of this commission um, to really push for balconies and ground level patios on properties to create um, more, more eyes on the property and more active space. Is that sufficient? Yes. Okay, we will also you. need a practical difficulty finding for that one for the north interior side yard setback. Okay, I mean, I think the property as a whole is a practical difficulty in that they cannot, um, they can't expand their property because of the large easement. So they're working with the, the property that they have that they are able to build upon. Um, so because they can't go one way, they're going to the north. Is that sufficient? Because of the constraints of the property, because of the easement? I believe that captures a practical difficulty, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your help, staff. <laughs> All right, so um, would Commissioner Sweezy accept the modifications to the motion and uh, maintain her second? I certainly, I certainly will, thank you. Okay. Uh, All right, so we have a motion and a, a second. Um, Commissioner Meyer, did you have a question still? No, I, I was um, seeking the same clarification that Peter already provided, and that is now irrelevant. Thank you. All right. Um, commissioners, any other comments uh, or discussion before we uh, call the roll? All right. Uh, seeing none, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Baxley. Nay. Commissioner Caprini. Aye. Commissioner Ford. Aye. Commissioner McGuire. Aye. 
Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Olson. Aye. Commissioner Sweezy. Aye. That's six yeas and one nay. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, that motion passes. Our next item is item number nine, uh, 4901, 4905, 4909, 4913, 4915, 4917, and 4921 France Avenue South and staff is Shanna Sether. Good evening, Vice President Olson, Planning Commissioners. Item number nine is France 50 Mixed Use Development. It includes the properties at 4901 through 4921 France Avenue South. Next slide, please. The applicant was before the City Planning Commission for Committee of the Whole earlier this summer and has made a significant number of changes to the proposed project, including the elimination of all variances. The applicant is proposing to construct a new five-story plan unit development with 45 dwelling units and four uh, spaces for neighborhood serving retail uses. The existing property is owned R2B, multiple family district. It's also in the corridor four built form overlay district and the shortland overlay. The applicant is proposing or has applied for the following applications. First, a petition to rezone all uh, seven properties, 4901, 05, 09, 13, 15, 17, and 4921 France Avenue South from the R2B multiple family district to the OR2 high density office residence district. They've also applied for a conditional use permit to allow for a plan unit development. And you'll hear me interchange the word, uh, the, the uh, acronym PUD for plan unit development through the presentation. Conditional use permit to increase the maximum height in the Shoreland Overlay District from two and a half stories, not to exceed 35 feet, to five stories, 70 feet. They've also applied for site plan review and a preliminary plan. The proposed site amenities include a large landscape publicly accessible plaza with outdoor seating areas, art feature, and a design drinking fountain off of France Avenue. The applicant is proposing to purchase renewable energy credits and participate in the city's sustainable benchmarking program. The proposed plans show an integrated green roof system, rain garden, and landscaped yards to enhance the environmental sustainability functions of the property. The applicant has cited the building to provide the largest setbacks along the north and the east, creating greater separation between the building mass and the lower scale residential uses that currently exist to the north and to the east. The proposed building would have two floors of underground parking with a total of 98 vehicle parking spaces. As you can see from the site plan, the driveway would be dedicated and adjacent to the public alley without access to the public alley. Um, so it would have its own curb cut. There would be two levels of below grade parking. Uh, there would be shared commercial and residential parking on P1, and there are 46 stalls uh, located on P1. And then the private residential parking would be located on P2, and that there would be 52 parking stalls there. Next slide, please. The building has been designed with four retail storefront uh, spaces along France Avenue South and the residential lobby at the north end of the site, which would be left at the plan um, at the bottom of the page. The applicant is proposing a combination of brick, cast stone, 5 8 inch fiber cement, metal and metal panel as the primary exterior materials. Several public comments have been provided regarding the requested application and there are a number of um, members of the public who are here to testify this evening. Staff is recommending approval of the requested land use applications based on the following findings. Uh, next slide, please. The petition to rezone is from the R2B district to the OR2 high density office residence district. The future land use designation for the property is community mixed use which supports large scale development, mixed use development with commercial areas fronting along major streets, including France Avenue. The proposed development is one half block north of 50th Street West, which you'll see on uh, the presentation is the dotted line, um, which is a goods and services corridor. 
The properties also have access right now to the number six Metro Transit. There's a bus stop um, immediately in front of the property at 4901 France Avenue North or France Avenue South. This, uh, the number six is uh, scheduled for upgraded service to the Metro E line um, uh, bus rapid transit line in 2025. There are planned metro stations that are in their early stages of planning that would be located along France Avenue between 50th Street West and 49th Street West. So on the same block um, uh, face as the proposed project would be northbound traffic and immediately across the street would be southbound traffic. Staff finds that the proposed rezoning from R2B to the OR2 district is consistent with the future land use guidance and associated poli policies as stated on pages four through eight of the staff report. Next slide, please. As I mentioned before, the applicant is seeking a conditional use permit to allow for a planned unit development. Staff finds that the proposed conditional use permit to allow for the PUD for a mixed use building with 45 dwelling units um, with four neighborhood serving retail tenant spaces and two levels of underground parking would not be detrimental to or endanger the public health safety, comfort, or general welfare. The proposed project will be providing amenities for both residents and the surrounding community, including a new public plaza along France Avenue South. The applicant is seeking alternatives to the maximum floor area for an individual building and front and corner side yards. So as you can see here on the slide, um, the two alternatives that are requested are to increase the maximum floor area of an individual building and also to reduce the required yards. In this case, it would be the front yard setback along France and the corner side yard along 49th Street West. And on the right side of the presentation, you can see the applicant um, is proposing 27 points uh, for a PUD where 20 are required. Next slide, please. The applicant included this demonstration within the, the packet that really kind of helps show the variation of the building in the push and pull in the setbacks and, and cantilevered spaces to really maximize um, the amount of um, light and air and um, separation to the adjacent residential uses. So the proposed plan unit development is one building and the applicant has divided that massing into two parts. Uh, with recesses along France Avenue and then also the public alley. The building cantilevers on floors two through four and provides uh, six foot setbacks along France with a 17 foot setback along the alley. The fifth floor, as you can see, is recessed an additional 15 feet along France Avenue, 31 feet six inches from the south, and that's the interior side uh, shared by the commercial parking lot and commercial building to the south. Um, 20 feet along 49th Street West, which is the corner side yard, and 27 feet 4 inches along the alley. The pro staff finds that the proposed setbacks of the fifth floor reduce the visibility of the uppermost floor, particularly from the pedestrian realm, um, which is set back approximately one bay, which is typically su suggested for the uppermost floor. For comparison, residential lots to the east are 42 feet in width. And that's essentially the distance between that fifth floor and the rear property lines of, those, of the shared residential properties to the east. Staff finds that the building responds to the change in the built form on adjacent properties to the east and that the varied setbacks provide a gradual transition in height and scale while maintaining sufficient access to light and air for adjacent properties. The property, as I mentioned before, is designated as corridor four for the built form overlay district. Corridor 4 reflects a variety of building types, both small and moderate sized lots, including combining of lots, and supports taller buildings as, as a reasonable means for further achieving comprehensive plan goals. The first floor of the structure includes four retail tenant spaces with storefront windows, which improves the pedestrian realm. In addition, there is also a large public plaza with landscaping, seating areas, and art feature and drinking fountain. On the north end of the site, um, I'm sorry, I think, um, next slide, please. Oh, that's okay. uh, There's a rain garden that separates the north end of the site um, along the corner side yard setback along 49th Street. The pedestrian oriented building and site design policies in the comprehensive plan encourage building placement where it enables solar access and allows light and air into the site and surrounding properties and supports energy efficient lighting. 
Staff finds that the building is well designed with consideration to the massing and exterior materials that align with the design uh, with a pedestrian scale, particularly at the ground level. Um, and I noted already the, the proposed points that the applicant is seeking. So the list here um, as requested matches 27 points. So they have met um, all of the, the requirements for underground parking plaza art feature, decorative uh, impervious pavers, decorative fencing, enhanced lighting, enhanced landscaping, enhanced stormwater management, recycling storage facilities, and water features. Next slide, please. The third application that the applicant is seeking is a conditional use permit to increase the maximum height in the shoreland overlay. Although it's pretty difficult to see in this map in the upper right hand corner here. Um, if you're looking at that uh, depiction in the upper left, that green mass is a wetland and about 530 feet to the nearest corner of the subject property is, um, so it's about 530 feet away. There is a blue line, um, you know, two blocks north that goes all the way um, to, uh, I believe that says, um, I'm not sure what that says, DuPont maybe, um, and then kind of cuts through about just about a block east of the site. Uh, the shoreland overlay um, restricts the maximum height, although the app, uh, although the property is um, zoned corridor four, which allows for four stories or 56 feet. That um, and additionally, the zoning code authorizes an administrative height increase in this district for up to six stories, 84 feet. However, the shoreland overlay restricts height to two and a half stories, not to exceed 35 feet. When in the shoreland overlay, we measure height to the very top of the uppermost part of the structure. So the 70 feet in this case is me measured to the top of the elevator overrun. Staff finds that the proposed building height will not be detrimental to or endanger the public health safety, comfort, or general welfare provided that the development complies with the applicable building codes. The surrounding area contains a mix of building heights from one to six stories. Staff notes that the proposed PUD in, um, is one building and that the applicant has proposed to divide up the massing into two parts with recesses, particularly along France and the public alley. And then the fifth floor is recessed beyond that. The applicant has provided shadow studies, which are included in the packet. And the proposed construction, if approved, would require erosion control plan and permit to ensure that both temporary and permanent erosion control measures are incorporated with best management practices. As I mentioned before, the proposed development is over 530 feet from the existing wetland, and staff finds that the distance between these two um, elements will uh, additionally mitigate any potential pollution of the protected water. The area around the wetland is also densely wooded. Staff finds that the proposed structure will have limited visibility from the protected wetland. And lastly, the wetland is not accessible to the proposed development. Next slide, please. For site plan review, um, the applicant is seeking FAR and height premiums. Um, so for the FAR premiums, they're seeking a, um, climate resiliency, ecological function and mixed use. So they comply with all of the standards that you see before you. And then in addition, um, for the height increase, they've asked for that additional story um, and additional 14 feet from what's allowed in the corridor four district. And as you can see, the premiums are, are slightly different for the FAR premium versus the height premium. The height premium, they're a little bit higher standard um, and they are meeting all of those standards. Next slide, please. There are two areas of alternative compliance requested for site plan review. The first is building placement. So we've kind of zoomed in on this uh, picture showing the building setback at the middle. And the intention again here is to allow for those masses to be um, essentially in two. So the setbacks are greater in this area than what um, the zoning code would require and staff therefore is recommending alternative compliance. Next slide, please. The second area of alternative compliance is for blank walls. 
on the south interior side yard and the rear uh, uh, rear yard, which faces west. In both cases, there are blank walls that exceed 25 feet in length. The applicant is mitigating those blank walls by providing a metal trellis with vines that will grow and uh, provide seasonal interest. Therefore, staff is recommending alternative compliance be granted. Next slide, please. And finally, the applicant is seeking a preliminary plat, which would replat the seven parcels into one block and one lot. And if the plat is to be approved, um, a, a final plat would be required in the future. So in summary, staff is recommending approval of the requested land use applications based on the findings found in the staff report. Recommendations and conditions of approval are listed on pages 29 and 30 of the staff report, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions for staff? All right, um, I'm not seeing any, so I will open the public hearing. Um, is the applicant here to speak about this item? If so, you can press star six to unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record and go ahead. Uh, good evening um, <clears throat> and thank you planning commission members for hearing our application this evening. Uh, my name is Tom Dillon. My address is 6035 Culligan Way in Minnetonka. I'm the uh, owner's representative for the applicant, uh, France 50 LLC. Uh, we began acquiring the pro uh, seven properties over 13 years ago, back in 2008, and uh, completed the acquisition of the balance of the properties on the block in 2020. Um, and I uh, joined France uh, LLC, France 50th LLC a year ago to start the planning uh, work on this property and this project. Uh, we have worked closely with uh, Ms. Sether to uh, understand and she guided us through the new zoning codes and all the requirements of the new code um, over the last year. As you may recall, we did uh, uh, appear before the um, Committee of the Whole in June and uh, you know, we had a lot of comments and a lot of uh, input uh, from the members and we have uh, brought back a, a project that has significant changes and uh, I think we believe uh, significant improvements to both the building and the site plan. Um, to date, we have had two meetings with the Fulton neighborhood leadership and uh, we have another one planned, a neighborhood leadership, and we are planning another on November 10th uh, with uh, the Fulton neighborhood and also are planning to set up a meeting with the residents who live on the east uh, excuse me, they would live on the west side, but on the east side of our property of Ewing Avenue uh, to uh, walk through the detail of our plans and, and listen to their comments and concerns. I'm sure much you'll, you'll hear about tonight. I, I also wanted to let the commission members know uh, that uh, although the a traffic study is not required, we have engaged SRF Consulting to produce a uh, trip generation and, and site review for the project. Uh, this report will be done this week uh, and happy to share that with staff and uh, neighbors and such. So we really have a good understanding of, of what type of traffic input inputs that we, or impacts, excuse me, that we will have. I think it'll be helpful for all parties to have uh, that information. Uh, and we did that uh, SRF work closely with Alan Klugman, the city traffic engineer, on uh, specifically what he wanted to see on that uh, on that report. So this evening we are requesting your support of the staff recommendations for approval of rezoning, our conditional use permits, site plan review, and the preliminary plan. And I would like to, if I could, now introduce Craig Hartman, our project architect for Momentum Design Group. Uh, to walk you through some of the project features and some of the changes that uh, have occurred since you saw us in June. So thank you. I'll turn it over to Craig. Thanks, Tom. Um, if we are able to, could we see the, uh, the uploaded document that I shared today of the previous concept? Uh, I just want to take you back to the uh, 
Committee of the Whole meeting back in June when we first introduced the project. And if somebody could tell me when that's up. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So I want to just look at this briefly. Um, you know, I, I'm going to very just quickly contrast uh, or, or sort of highlight some changes that we've taken a look at. So if, uh, if you don't mind, if you could now move to uh, sheet X01. Uh, this would show kind of the current um, the current project and some of the, the renderings that we've put together for it. You know, as Ms. Southern uh, described, we, we have made a lot of changes to this. And I think, um, you know, it, it goes without saying when you see the images that, that um, there's been a lot of input into the project. Uh, we very much appreciate sort of the input we've received from both Committee of the Whole, um, city staff, um, public works, um, then the neighborhood. Uh, we've, we've received a lot of input and I think, I do believe the project is better off for it. Uh, the first piece I want to highlight tonight is just simply, uh, you know, it was already mentioned, but how we've, uh, you know, broken up scale and we've really tried to focus on presenting um, what is essentially two buildings. And, and, you know, when you look at, um, if you can see sheet X01 up in the upper right corner, kind of shows the, the southern half of the building is, is this white mass. It's a floating plane above uh, essentially clear storefronts. And, and this fronts our uh, linear plaza, which is located along France Avenue. And this is sort of, this is our southern half of the, of the project. It, it is sort of our, uh, transparent uh, facade that we want to plug into the energy of France Avenue. Um, we want to share energy out to the street. We want to share the energy back into our building. Um, and sort of we set up this, this ability for pedestrians to, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, find a place, find a place that, that works, um, different areas of seating and, and landscaping, things like that. As we then move to the north, we have set up uh, essentially our, our brick building. And um, this is a, a very modern, detailed, um, very quiet, what I would call quiet uh, brick structure. It's, it's, it's not closed off by any means, but it is um, certainly a very different feel from the south. And, and that's our response to the idea that, that we are a transition. You know, we are transitioning from the southern portion of our site to the northern, and we have very different neighbors on those two sides. Um, we work very hard to sort of uh, break down the building into different segments and, uh, frankly, diff very different experiences from the south to the north. A couple of other items that I want to highlight. Um, uh, as mentioned already, we, we have changed our uh, traffic ingress and egress from the project. Um, if uh, you are able to show a uh, sheet X06, that would be our, our standard site plan. Um, we now exit, uh, rather than exiting into the alley, we are directing all of our traffic to the north to 49th Street. Um, we think this would be very helpful to the neighbors. Um, this, is, this was a partnership, not a partnership, but a, um, uh, we worked together with Public Works and uh, Paul Miller um, considered our request for this second curb cut um, isn't normally um, isn't normally found in the city, but we uh, we were very thankful for him to to consider this because we do feel that it is a better it is a better uh, solution for our traffic and some of the neighbors' concerns. Um, we we have changed our uh, alley functions. Uh, we have removed any sort of loading from the alley. Um, uh, again, per city staff comments, um, so we, we are using the alley for trash removal only. Um, let's see, and I think the only other thing I wanted to talk about tonight, again, just sort of trying to highlight some of the differences is that, you know, the, the plaza along the uh, France Avenue uh, was originally scheduled for the south portion of the site. We have now moved it to uh, along France. And this has provided a, a great opportunity for us to um, basically start placemaking, you know, and, and try to, to create 
uh, a sense of, of interaction between public and private. Um, we have scheduled a couple of different art features in this plaza, which we're, we're very excited about. Um, and we have started that process to uh, uh, let that art um, or understand how that commissioning could take place uh, to find a local artist to help us with that. I think with that, I am going to turn it over uh, to you and uh, we will um, open it up for questions. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, are there any questions for the applicant? All right, I'm not seeing any questions right now. So um, we are going to move on to our registered public speakers. Before we do that, um, there are many people registered to speak. So if any, if everyone could please keep their um, comments under two minutes. Um, we would appreciate that and please avoid uh, repeating things that have already been said. So under two minutes, uh, I would rather not have to cut anyone off. So um, we'll start with our first registered speaker, Kelly Fitz. Uh, you can press star six to unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record and then proceed with your comments. My name is Lawrence Graham. I'm told that I'm no, lo no longer muted. Is that correct? That's correct. We've got you a little farther down the list. Um, so I'll call on you uh, shortly. Thank you. Um, is Kelly Fitz on the line? If so, uh, star, uh, press six, state your name and address for the record um, and go ahead. All right, we'll come back to Kelly. Um, next would be Andrew McMillan. Press star six, state your name and address for the record um, and proceed with your comments. Andrew McMillan. All right. Um, well then, Lawrence Graham sorry, is next. Oh, this is Andy McMillan. Can you hear me? Yep. Please go ahead. State your name and address for the record. Thanks. Uh, my name is Andy McMillan. I'm a Minneapolis resident who lives at 4915 Ewing Avenue South, and I'd like to voice my opposition to the rezoning and categorization to mixed use of this proposed development. Uh, my primary objection is to the size of the proposed development. I actually went over there yesterday. I took a tape measure and my phone and I did this because I found it difficult to conceptualize how big this was going to be. I sent my observations and some pictures into Shanna last night. I guess I would summarize this area as being a mix of single family homes that are one and a half stories high and then some retail which are one to maybe two stories. This is looks like it's going to try to be 70 feet high, which in layman's terms to me is a seven story building. I do not feel like this fits in the neighborhood. Uh, this is gonna back up to neighbor's homes, which are gonna share an alley. I just feel that there is no proportion or scale between this building and anything in this neighborhood. Uh, in addition to the scale being out of place, I also think the there's going to be shadows cast here. I actually walked this and these shadows are going to put neighbors' homes in the dark. I disagree wholeheartedly with the shadow survey that they claim to have done. I also am concerned about the traffic. I think this is going to turn 49th Street into a bypass for 50th Street, which is busy already. Um, I will say again, my name is Andy McMillan. I live at 4915. That is my home address. I'm not sure if the developer gave his home address or if that was his work address but these are my uh, reservations with the project. Thank you for your comment. Up next is Lawrence Graham. You can press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. Yeah, my name, my, name is Lawrence, my name is Lawrence Graham and uh, I live at uh, 4928 Ewing. 
Um, and actually, um, we put forward a proposal uh, between there are 23 neighbors who all have the same objection to this um, uh, to this actual proposal. And uh, those 23 neighbors have asked me to, and I included their names and addresses, have asked me to talk rather than having 23 people saying the same thing, um, but to have me to go through. So I, I will probably need more than more than two minutes because I'm representing 23 neighbors, but no more than about five or six minutes. Um, and the, you know, we, we we, you know, we put it all together in this way in order to respect the Commission's time. Uh, we provided one document. And we, you know, we, we, we feel the development proposal is, not, is even though it's not completely untrue, there are many, many omissions. And it stretches the facts, which if the Commission and staff really knew the facts, from those, who, those of us who live here would see that it is, uh, it is completely and utterly detrimental to our community and, and to many, many homes. We found that there's a total, been a total lack of communication. I heard earlier that um, uh, from uh, Tom, the agent, that I've uh, been in touch with um, the uh, um, the local Fulton neighbourhood. They don't represent us. Nobody there lives here. We didn't even know that that took place. We eventually tried to get hold of uh, of Tom and uh, didn't get any return phone calls. He promised meetings. Now I hear that there'll be a meeting afterwards. We we, we understand something will be built. We do understand that. But let's be good neighbors and let's work together. Let's not wait until after it's all been approved, something that we totally object to, and then present it to us. In addition, the, it's, it's an, an amazing in, uh, intrusion on our privacy and our enjoyment of our homes. The drawings of the development, uh, the, the actual um, renderings, they all ignore the community. There's no rendering from, from Ewing that shows five stories towering above single and two-story homes. I mean, it would be, it would look hideous. This building is going to be 70 feet tall, towering over our homes. There's no rendering of the alleyway that shows how close and how massive the building is. And in fact, there's a misleading rendering called alley perspective, which is absolutely not the alley perspective. It's completely false. It shows grass and trees where our garages and our backyards are. That is just, just wrong and is just not true. Uh, the proposed building, five stories across a 12 foot, a 12 foot wide alley, the proposal says it's 14 feet, but it is actually 12 feet. With five stories of tenants with balconies looking into our into our bedrooms, looking into our living rooms, looking into our backyards. And as Andy pointed out, the, the uh, it will totally uh, take away this, our, our light from uh, from the uh, our backyards. We will no longer have afternoon sun once this building were to go up with those five stories. But the biggest problem really is the, is the traffic moving out onto uh, 40 nights in France, which will move to a, uh, it'll, it'll make a busy junction to a really a dangerous one. And right now we see four or five cars um, that met very often waiting to get onto France from 49th. So you can imagine with, with 98 cars, a 98 car parking lot coming into this area, it will just back up. And it'll be impossible, it'll even get to a point where cars will be unable to, to, to actually leave the parking lot let alone uh, drive down 49th. And so what will tenants do is they won't park in the parking lot. They'll park on 49th, they'll park on France, they'll park on Ewing. And we know this is the case right now because there are seven renters there right now. And we see five or six of their cars already parking on our streets. So five or six cars from, from seven rentals. Now we're having 45 rental units plus commercial. So we will see 30 cars parked on our streets. So that's surely makes this, this so-called credit for the underground parking They're totally invalid because that parking will not work. It'll be impractical, cars will not be able to get in and will not be able to get out. And to avoid that, in fact, cars will then maybe try and go down the uh, Ewing and cause chaos down there. But we know we have some, uh, some suggestions on, on, on some ways. I mean, really, five stories is an exception. Five stories being asked to, to grow to be enormous, a 70 foot building really make, make, it, make it smaller, make it three stories. It, the, currently it's four stories as it is. Why five stories? Make it smaller. As far as traffic is concerned, why not access from the south of, the, uh, of that building via the safety of the lights that are on market in France? So no, no cars uh, uh, uncontrolled pulling out across France, no, no backing up the traffic in the, in the uh, Ewing. Use that area. We, we understand that Obviously, that, that there would have to be an accommodation with the Pinehurst building to the south. Uh, we, we understand that. I'll ask you to start Pine, wrapping Pinehurst up here. Building, 
Yes, I'm going to do that in one second. I, I, let me just summarize here. We understand that, uh, that, they, would comp that uh, they would have to uh, compensate Pinehurst, but obviously that would infect their profits. So summary, five-story rental building, just feet from our homes, misleadingly justified with an unusable parking lot. It'll ruin our neighborhood and our ability to enjoy it. It'll take away our sunlight and make our streets unsafe and even dangerous, all for a developer's profits. So we ask the Commission to totally and utterly reject this whole proposal as it stands. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Up next is Teresa Pearson. Uh, press star six to unmute yourself. State your name and address for the record. Teresa Pearson. We heard you for a second. This, yes, this is Teresa Pearson. Can state you your address and, yep, state your address and go ahead. Yes. yes, I'm at 4901 Ewing, so right on the corner of uh, Ewing and 49th Avenue. So um, I completely agree with everything that Lauren said, and I'm one of the names that are on the, on the document that he sent in. Did you have anything to add that was not already said? Um, not anything that's already been said. I completely agree with what Andy already presented as well. So I want to go on the record to say that I do agree with all of the um, issues that have been risen. All right. Thank you for your comment. Uh, up next is, or I think I skipped Stefan Thomas. If you are on the line, you can press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. My name is Stephen Thomas, and my address is 4845 France Avenue. Rather than repeat the same talking points, I want the Planning Commission to know that the plan really was to let Lawrence speak for the majority of us. So if he got cut short and had more to say, I'd like to see the remainder of my two minutes back to him. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Up next is uh, Rachel Wagaspock. Uh, press star six, state your name and address for the record. Hi. Can we heard you for a second. Hello, can you hear me? We can. State your name and address okay. for the record. My name My name is Rachel Wagasbeck and I'm at 4900 Drew. I am one block removed from this, so I kind of feel like my comments are a little bit different. Um, in general, I do support this development. I um, don't have a problem with the height. Um, I know the comment earlier was that it's a seven-story building, but it's it's not. Seven-story building would indicate seven floors of housing, and this is only four floors of housing. Uh, I do fit, feel like it fits into the broader development of what is already going on at 50th in France. Um, including Nolan Mains and the other proposed development further south on 50th and France. Um, as far as parking, I am glad that the traffic study is being done. And my area of concern specifically regarding traffic is the corner of 49th and Drew. Um, it, we are two blocks from Southwest High School. During the school day, there are um, during release periods, as well as the beginning of, and end of the school day. There's a lot of theaters coming down the street. Um, kind of a dangerous intersection and has been for years. Uh, in the nine years that I've lived here, there's an accident at least once a year. And twice I have witnessed or have heard of somebody getting hit on a bicycle. So I would hope that any consideration of an increase in traffic from the development would also include looking at this specific intersection at 49th and Drew. Uh, my other comment is um, I am disappointed. Well, I don't know. I haven't heard what the rentals will be charged, but I'm assuming it's uh, designed, designed to, be to be reflective, reflective. of rentals in the market. So um, I am a little concerned that affordable housing will be taken away to build this. Um, and my other comment before I wrap up, I know I've only two minutes, is um, I do welcome the snow removal that a big um, 
development will bring. Um, I walk 50th and France frequently, a couple times a week, running errands to the grocery store. And the snow removal for sure has been an issue in the winter. And I, it will not be anymore with a big development there. So thank you. Those are my comments. Thank you for your comments. Uh, up next is Carol Beeman. If you're online, press star six to unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record. Hello? We can hear you. Uh, state your name and address for the record. My name is Carol Beeman. My husband, Jeffrey, is here with me. We reside at 4909 Ewing Avenue South. Our property is within the 350 feet of the subject property. We oppose the plan as presented to the commission um, as well as rezoning. And um, Lawrence has uh, spoken on our behalf and we agree with what he said. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, that, oh, we've got Jeffrey Beeman next, but I think you might have just gone. Um, if not, press star six to unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record. Uh, oh. All right, I think they were a pair. Um, up next is Roberta Castellano and if you're on the line, press star six to unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Roberta Castellano, 4854 France Avenue South. That's in the city of Edina. Uh, good evening. First, I just want to say a few things for the record. I live within 100 feet of the subject site, which means that I am within the statutory consent range. The subject site is currently zoned for low density residential and Minneapolis does not have to rezone it. But if you want to rezone it, then it must be rezoned to commercial because it has to be consistent with comp plan guidance, which is commercial. And that comes from Minnesota statutes 473.858 subdivision one. But there's a catch because under Minnesota state law, you're not permitted to rezone from residential to commercial unless and until you obtain written consent from surrounding properties. Minnesota statutes 462.357 subdivision five. And you don't, the developer doesn't have consent and he's not gonna get it. Now I oppose the JMS high density commercial redevelopment plan, which would replace the singles and duplexes currently on site. And I oppose the rezoning from residential to commercial that is being considered today. And I especially oppose the laundering of a commercial rezoning through a designated residential OR2 district in order to circumvent statutory consent. And my first request to you is that you comply with Minnesota statutes and disqualify the application due to the failure to obtain statutory consent. And I ask you to remove the application from the meeting agenda. But if you're going to go ahead with rezoning, then my alternative request is for each member of the planning commission to explain for the record how it is that you personally rationalize the laundering of a commercial rezoning through an ostensibly residential district for the purpose of ev evading statutory consent and which residential district enables a fully commercial redevelopment that is just like what is routinely approved. First person, Kelly Fitz. If you're on the line, um, press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. All right. Um, if there's, that's the uh, end of our list of registered speakers. But if there's anyone else on this call who would like to speak on this item, uh, you can do so now. Press star six to unmute yourself. State your name and address for the record. Can you hear me now? We can. Please go ahead. Thanks. <laughs> My fingers are getting blisters from pressing star six so many times. Let me try and get through. This is Kelly Fitz. Uh, oh, go ahead. 4924 Ewing uh, in the fallout zone, the proposed development. 
and I um, vehemently object to the proposal and to the fact that uh, none of us, uh, represented by Lawrence Graham, uh, were consulted by the developers, and I uh, wholeheartedly support Lawrence's objections, which he articulated so well. I yield the remainder of my time. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else on the line uh, who would like to speak on this item? If so, uh, press star six, unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record. All right, I am not hearing anyone. Um, so I will close the public hearing. Uh, commissioners, uh, is there any discussion or questions on this item? Commissioner McGuire. Thank you. Um, typically when projects go to our committee and then come back later, um, we have heard that they've worked with the residents. Um, did this, could staff just talk about um, what engagement they've done with the neighbors a little bit more? Um, and um, if if we're aware of any of that um, or if, if we recommended it, it sounds like staff did an amazing job working with them behind the scenes um, and getting what we wanted, but just wanted to know about what engagement they'd done. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McGuire. Um, I think this question will probably be best answered by the applicant who can probably go into detail with how and who they engaged with. Um, uh, my understanding is that they engage with the Fulton Neighborhood Association and members of the Fulton Neighborhood Association. Um, but again, they, they could probably answer that better than myself. Uh, Planning Commission members, this is Tom Dillon again. Um, so we had uh, two meetings with the Fulton um, Neighborhood Association. Um, and I think this was all during COVID, so they were all virtual meetings. Uh, in the first meeting, the Fulton Neighborhood Group uh, brought some of the, of the leadership. I don't remember the names of all the people who were involved. Uh, and in the second meeting, I think we had some of the neighbors involved in that call. Um, in addition, uh, we also uh, obviously worked with Council Member Palmasano. Uh, I think we've had three or four calls and more meetings, but let's call them calls uh, with her. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we do, um, we're, we're continuing to uh, meet, we're going to continue and meet again with the uh, Fulton Neighborhood Group um, on the 10th of November, and we also will uh, set up a meeting with the uh, Ewing Neighbors uh, as well. Commissioner McGuire, does that answer your question? Yes, that does. Thanks. Okay. It does seem a little odd to me to set up a meeting after it's um, been approved by the Planning Commission. Um, but I understand COVID kind of messes up timelines, so that answers my question. Thanks. Um, if I could if I could just speak again, commission members, please. Uh, so we did know that we, uh, after talking to um, SRF and Alan Klugman at the city, that um, we thought it was a good idea to uh, get the traffic uh, study done or the report that Alan Klugman recommended. Uh, so that's part of the reason. Uh, I know it does sound unusual to, to also meet with um, the neighborhood association again and and, mem and uh, neighborhood members but we thought it would be a good idea to provide that information and have those discussions because i think we can always learn something even though <clears throat> we may be past this meeting there's opportunities to learn things that we can do better that can address the neighborhood concerns um, and also uh, uh, whatever whatever needs to be discussed so um, so it's a little unusual but i think uh, continuing or even advancing the communication with uh, 
with our neighbors and with the neighborhood association and the uh, council member is is also a good idea to, to continue to do that so thank you uh, this is Lawrence Graham. Can I just uh, respond to uh, what Thomas the just public, said? The public hearing is closed. I understand that, but what he said was, yes. was, was a lie. The, the public hearing is closed. What he, what um, he said was untrue. Up next is Commissioner Meyer. Thank you. Um, so during the hearing, someone claimed that there's a requirement that in order to do this, it would have to be rezoned to commercial. Can staff speak to the accuracy of that? Um, perhaps what would be easiest is IT could help me again with the slide. I'm going to find which page it is from the staff presentation. Um, let's go down one. Nope, sorry, it's going to be up a little ways. So it should be around two or three. And down one more. That's the one. Thank you so much. So as you can see from um, the excerpt here is from the Minneapolis 2040 plan, our comprehensive plan. The site has a future land use designation of community mixed use, which supports large scale mixed use development. Um, the, pro the proposed project is um, seeking a rezoning to OR2. The OR2 district allows for multiple family dwellings. It also allows for uh, a handful of neighborhoods serving retail uses. Um, and if you remember back when uh, the applicant went to the community the whole earlier this summer, they originally were proposing one large tenant space and now have divided that up to be more consistent with a comprehensive plan. Um, the OR2 is not a commercial zoning district, um, but does allow for a, a mix of uses that would be consistent with a comprehensive plan. Because the rezoning is not to a commercial district, consent signatures are not required. Thank you. That, that addresses uh, my question. Um, I guess I'll just say, you know, that, I mean, you know, one of the commenters asked you know, each of the commissioners to go on record. I don't think that's necessary since it could be a long meeting, but I mean, that is the type of um, uh, conclusion that we generally defer to our staff to make. Um, so um, I think these recommendations from staff make sense and I will um, vote according to the staff recommendations. Thank you. Commissioners, any other discussion um, or questions or would anyone like to make a motion? Uh, we'll go Commissioner Meyer. Okay. Um, I move approval of items A, B, C, D, and E with all stated, stated conditions consistent with staff recommendations. Commissioner McGuire. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right. I am seeing none, uh, so I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Baxley. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Caprini has left. Um, Commissioner Ford. Aye. Commissioner McGuire. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. Commissioner Sweezy. Aye. That's six yeas and zero nays. All right, that motion passes and that concludes all of our public hearing items for the evening. Are there any announcements from staff? 
Thank you, Vice President Olson. I did just want to uh, bring your attention to an email that I sent out last week regarding the extension of the local public health emergency in the city of Minneapolis. That extension was approved by the city council. And with that, our remaining two planning commission meetings and committee of the whole meetings for the year will be held remotely. And we will give you updates as soon as possible about what meetings will look like in January, including when those meetings will be. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Um, uh, commissioners, are there any other items you would like to discuss before we adjourn this evening? If not, and without objection, I will declare this meeting adjourned. Our next Planning Commission meeting will be Monday, November 15th, 2021. And our next Committee of the Whole meeting will be Thursday, November 4th, 2021. Thank you, everybody.